Hello, brothers and sisters of UAW Local 1166. I uh, hope you and your families are doing well. Um, as you can see, with the safety glasses and the mask, uh, you'll have to get used to this um, when, whenever you're inside the plant or even out on break. Um, they require you to wear the mask and your safety goggles uh, the whole time you're within the facility. So keep that in mind. And I have brought these questions up. If you're eating lunch, why do you need, if you have your mask off to eat, why do you need your safety glasses on? I reached out to International to get an answer on that. And they really didn't answer the question that I sent them. So we'll have to address this as it goes on. And I know there are some needs that you will need to take your glasses off if you wear the safety glasses, because uh, they did order a bunch of uh, anti-fogging safety glasses. So you'll have to work that out to where you put your prescriptions on because they don't come with readers. So there are some things that we're discussing. Um, I think as long as you utilize the safety glasses, if you need to put readers on your prescription glasses, put them on, do what you gotta do, remove them and put the safety glasses back on. And if you have any concerns with that, uh, let me know so I can bring that up. Okay, so like I said, make sure you're that's the new norm with the safety glass and the mask on. We're just going to have to get used to it. Uh, it is their facility. It is their policy. Uh, the International Union backs it, uh, what they're doing. Uh, we just got to make sure we follow through with it. Uh, just please try not to put somebody in a situation where they have to do something. Um, there's a lot of changes that happened uh, this week uh, compared to last week when they were going to bring back a total of 700 plus, and that number has dropped down because of the eight speed. Uh, that they're not running the KTP. Uh, so by now, hopefully, they've reached out to uh, everybody and those who did get volunteered or those who the opportunity to volunteer, they had to do some forcing or lack of a better word. Uh, they had to schedule those people. Um, so some of you some of you are being uh, scheduled when you don't want to come back. Uh, but it is, it goes by seniority. So we'll, you'll just have to deal with that. Um, again, once you do come back, um, if you have any concerns at all, please bring it to my attention so I can get them addressed. Um, for those of you who are coming back, I'd like to welcome you back. And those of you who remain to stay out of the layoff, uh, please continue to be safe. Um, so some of the changes besides the numbers, uh, if anybody went through the drive through to pick up the return to work packets, uh, the return to work packets that corporate sent out did not have the mask in, in the packet. The company will provide those once you return to work. They just got to figure out if they're going to give you so many to last a week or they're going to do it every day. But that, that will be, uh, once that process starts, you'll know it when you come into the, into the plant. So they had the mo motorcycle parking area blocked off uh, to go through this like a little wiggly thing to get through from the, this gate to that gate and all through the turnstiles. Uh, that's still gonna be utilized for a little while, but right now they're moved all the, gate seven will have an entrance and an exit, gate eight will have an entrance and an exit, but the entrance will be on the south side of gate seven and on the north side of gate eight. So when you go through, you're gonna be going through a structure, let's just use, utilize a tent, because they have the thermal temperatures that they're gonna be utilizing. So you go through that tent and then you get your temperature check and then they'll allow you to proceed through a door to go through the turnstile to clock into the facility and you also have to show your that you're good to go by utilizing your phone or the questionnaire hard copy um, if you go through there your temperature is high above the 100.4 there's an exit to that door that takes you straight up to the parking lot so you can get back in your vehicle and return home and then you will receive a call from labor relations and or the medical personnel Again, make sure you do check your temperature prior to coming to work because it would behoove you to check it. And if it is 100.5, 100.6, you know, just a little higher, 100.4, there's no need to come all the way into the plant just to have your temperature checked and turn around and get sent home. So it would behoove you to follow the procedures that they put in place to check your temperature, fill out the questionnaire, and if it is yes on one of those questions, you do need to stay home and then it'll automatically, you'll get a phone call from uh, labor relations or medical and they will go through more questions with you to see if you're safe to return to work or if you need to stay or go on self-quarantine. And if you do that, then you'll have to follow the sick leave process. Uh, but again, we'll take those on, on case by case basis because there may be something else that may change between now and then. Um, so just keep that in mind. Again, 
like I said, the, the gates, the entrance, gate 10 will be blocked off. Uh, KTP is going to be us utilizing it, but KTP is not. Uh, now, once we get everything up and rolling and get more people back, we're going to open that facility or the gate back up. So that way we can park on that side because we know there's no way we can handle the amount of parking on uh, Boulevard and Home Avenue. Uh, again, you'll see those changes. Uh, the structure will be put up and we'll have to follow those procedures. If there's a long line, hopefully there won't be a long line. Um, you have to use some common sense. If you clock in, you know, five or six, ten minutes after and you've been waiting to get through line, you're not, you're not going to be counted absent. We'll go back through and uh, the committee members will go back through our stewards, we'll go back through LR and then we'll go through and, and fix what we can. Um, there's no excuse if you show up an hour late saying you're sitting in your vehicle or whatever the case, or we've got to take that. We've got to be proactive on that and make sure you do, do it the right way. Um, some other changes in there, uh, they did a lot of work, like I said before, in the restrooms. Uh, they changed a lot of ceiling tiles. They put LED lights in all the locker rooms that look great and they're bright so people can actually see in them now. Um, some of the, the cafeteria, I mean, they're bringing somebody back. So the vending machines are getting stocked up. And we are talking about some of the uh, getting forced air into the satellite break rooms because you can't constantly run air conditioning when it gets hot because that defeats the purpose. There's no fresh air coming in. Um, so we have those conversations and we're still trying to tackle those. Uh, the other things, like I said, the social distancing, um, wearing the mask when the running die cast machine, those are things that we're still going to have, you know, talks about. Uh, but right now, everybody is required to wear their safety glasses and their safety mask as provided by the company while you are in the facility, um, unless you are smoking, eating. I believe those are the only two areas. But if you are in the break room, you're supposed to have those on unless you're eating. Um, I think those are the only things that, again, we're, they're still going through the plant and making changes as, as it sends down from corporate or if International brings something in, if we identify something, they are going through and making those changes. Uh, so if you have any questions, again, uh, please let uh, Hannah and Dwayne know and they can get them to me so I can answer them. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started on the questions. Uh, number one, how early are we allowed to clock in, many and change clothes? How early are we allowed to clock in many people change clothes? Yeah, you know, they understand that. And before they were going to shut the gates off. Right now the gates are open. So if you do clock in, there's going to be to get back to the uh, structure of the tents where you get your temperature changed or checked. Uh, that's going to be manned 24 seven by security. So that's a relief uh, for those people who want to take four hours PAA and then have to sit there and push the call button, wait for security, blah, blah, blah. And you know how that process works. Uh, so that is going to be manned. Um, so there really is not a, and it's usually past practice 30 minutes prior to start of your shift uh, because anything out further than that, in case there was an incident, it becomes a liability more than it does. You know, that's just the way they look at it. So I think it'll be fine if, if you keep it within 30 minutes and clock in because a lot of people do go get changed. Uh, so I don't think there'll be an issue with that. Number two, what will gates look like? One entrance, two entrance entrances. Again, I, I touched base on seven and eight. There will be an in and out on seven and eight. And then further down the road, they will open up 10 and we'll have that probably the same process. Uh, they may end up piggybacking off KTP at that gate, but we'll have to wait and see how that goes uh, once we get closer to the June timeframe. Can you take your mask off? And again, I address that. You can take it off to eat. Other than that, you're not supposed to take it off. Eat or smoke. Uh, other than that, you're not supposed to take it off. Um, so there, it's going to be, it's going to take some while to get used to it. I mean, they, the hotter it gets, then we'll just have to address those issues. And hopefully, hopefully by that time, they'll make it optional whether you want to wear them or not. Um, number four, if remount is required to wear a mask, are they fireproof? Um, everybody gets the same mask to, to wear, except if you work in furnace repair or if you work in a remount, and you need a shield and or a different mask to do your job required the requirements by your PPE, then you need to seek your supervisor and, and make sure your requirements are met. Number five, are vending machines going to be available? Uh, yes, actually yesterday they went in to fill the vending machines up and they will be, will be available. Um, again, American Food and Vending had a lot of their employees laid off too. 
So we had to reach out to uh, an individual over there and they did bring the supplies, cups and all the lead and whatnot and stocked up yesterday. So those vending machines will still be accessible. Number six, if they get enough team leaders at 1100, will they skip over your name? Uh, again, it goes by seniority. So if they get the volunteers by seniority, they will keep going down the list. And if, if they don't get enough, then they're gonna go from the bottom up and force. Um, it is broke down by team leader and team member. So if there's no requirement for the team leaders, they only need four. They're only gonna get four. They're not gonna force them into do a department 11 or a team member work. So if they get enough, I guess they, you could say they would skip over you, but that's not the way I would view it. I would term it. So again, by seniority, the canvas down, if they need four, they're gonna get four, and if they got a four from the bottom up, and it is what it is. Number seven, if the line moves slowly, will we be counted tardy? And I addressed that at the beginning. Uh, you're not supposed to be counted tardy, but then again, if you're 30 minutes or 40 minutes, and there's been nobody out there, you're probably gonna be counted tardy. Uh, just remember there are cameras out in the parking lots, so keep that in mind as well. Number eight, going to Canada, will I be able to return to work? Um, depends on when you go to Canada, if they left the travel restrictions to the other countries. Uh, but again, you'll have to touch base, get with me or Terry Kingsey or Ryan Cottingham, and we'll have to work on that case-by-case uh, -case basis because I really don't want to give you an answer now, not knowing what the future is going to hold. So I'd rather you get in touch with uh, myself or the committee men and, and we'll have those conversations. Number nine, my vacation is on a sign-up sheet in my department, but not the computer. How does that work? So they got the, the vacation, the PILV is already post, posted out by management. Um, if your vacation is on a sign-up sheet, just get with your supervisor. You're still uh, authorized to go on your vacation and take PA days. It's business as usual. They can't deny you. Once you sign up for vacation and they approve it, they cannot deny you your vacation. But again, if you're not on attendance policy, you still have the option of calling in those five PAA days. As long as you're not in procedure, you can still utilize those PAA days if you need to use them. You can check with your boss. If your boss says, yeah, I pre-schedule it, and then go that route and do that. But if not, if you have that, that alternate means is to call and take a PAA. Number 10, can we give up team leader positions to stay on laid off? Uh, yes, you have every right to um, resign as a team leader. Um, you just have to fill out the paperwork and it's got to go through all the process, the steps to get signed by Joe Cook, Steve Long, and whoever else is involved in it. Um, I would not recommend it, but if that's what you want to do, uh, that's totally up to you. They're going to need more team members than they are team leaders. So, depends on your seniority if you're able to stay out or if they're going to force you in. But that's totally your choice. Uh, if you have any questions on that, you can contact uh, Brian Cottingham and he will answer those. Number 11, where will we all park? Uh, again, there's not going to be everybody back at full force. Um, everybody's going to park on the west side of the plant where we have the access to gate 7 and gate 8. Um, there are going to be some handicap parking, uh, probably six or seven spots taken away and they're gonna be moved across from gate seven. So they're gonna open up those and make those additional handicap because they can't take those away. And this is only temporarily, hopefully, uh, we can only have that tent or that structure there and we can get business back to usual. Uh, but at the time being, they're only gonna have that west parking lot open and you cannot use, unless you park over on the KTP side and then walk around, um, right now we're just, there's going to be plenty of parking for the people who are coming in next week and hopefully the week after. If it gets a little scarier after that, then we'll have those conversations where we have to open it up quicker over on the gate 10 side. If you are number 12, if you are called back, where do you report to find out what area you will be in? Uh, if you're called back and you report, uh, you go to the fishbowl uh, and then management will direct you to where you need to go. And they'll probably ask you where you're more comfortable with running if you have the seniority to maintain that job then that's where you'll go but the lower seniority they may put you in an area that you're not familiar with but again that's why we have team leaders and troubleshooters there to assist you so don't feel aggravated if you're getting called to an area that you're not comfortable with um, just get with your team leader and your troubleshooter 
and tell them you need assistance. It's not, it's not a big deal. We'll work through it. Number 13, why do we need to wear a mask if the CDC says healthy people should not wear them? That's a good question, but the, the requirements that the company has set forth is put out by FCA and the CDC. So if the company says, that, hey, we need to make these extra precautions to wear a mask in the safety classes, then we have to follow it. It's their facility. And the union, the international union, or the union is not gonna fight over extra precautions as far as safety. I know, I know it's uncomfortable to wear a mask the whole time we're in there, but again, it's their facility, it's part of their, their requirement that we do it, and we just have to follow that. And if there's a problem with you having uh, you know, restrictions against masks or whatever, bring those to our attention and then we'll, then we'll have those conversations. Number 14, when do you have to be back to qualify for June bonus? Uh, you can remain on uh, layoff and still be qualified for the June bonus. Uh, that, that does cover temporary layoff. And the only exception is, like I said from the last video, if you're on sick leave, it goes 90 days back. So you'll have to get a hold of your steward and find out if you've been on sick leave 90 days or longer, if you fit that 90 days in when the quali qualifying date is, which I believe is May the 15th. Um, but if you have questions over that when you're on sick leave, get a hold of your steward and they can, know, they can let you know what's going on. But again, the June bonus, if you're on temporary layoff, you are qualified. Number 15. How is tobacco spitting going to be handled? That's a really good question. Somebody's gonna have a really bad mask. Um, we haven't really brought that up. We, we would hope that people would not spit in the water fountains, even though we're trying not to utilize them. We're trying to get different fountains in there. Um, I will have that conversation uh, when I go back to the plant and see how that's gonna be handled. But again, people's gotta show enough respect not to spit on the floors, not to spit in the fountains, the sinks, the urinals, the, whatever the case is. Uh, nobody wants their germs spread around. I mean, if you want to chew, put your chew in and do what you got to do, but don't, don't spread it around, spit it all over the place because nobody wants that, that nasty. Uh, but I will find out if there's an issue with somebody that chews tobacco. Um, I guess I'll have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with them and see how we can handle it. But again, we have to have respect for other people and not spit on the floors and do those other places that you're, you shouldn't. If you don't do it at home, don't do it at the factory. Um, people don't like to see that. Uh, number 16, if you have underlying health issues, will we be able to stay out longer or will you have to go on sick leave? That's, uh, you need to get with your committee men to really answer that question. If you have underlying health issues, it makes more sense to continue on layoff However, the requirement is that you need to go seek your, your physician and start on a sick leave. Uh, but again, if you have those, you need to contact your committee members and they can walk you through that process. Uh, there may be something they can work out or you may have to go on a sick leave. It's kind of hard for me to tell you without knowing the individual circumstances. So please contact them and we'll get that answer, answered. Number 17, masks were not in corporate packets. Will they be handed out at the gate? And I brought that up earlier. All the masks will be handed out, usually on a day-to-day -day basis, or they may go to, you know, give you enough for the whole week. Right now, they're still having those conversations on how they want to do it. But if you go to the the structure or the tent, there will be gloves, masks, and we need to work on having uh, both types of safety glasses. Number seventeen. Correction, number 18, if we have been out of state and are required to return to work Monday, do we have to self-quarantine? No. Again, we have to use common sense on that. If you live by the state line or you go shopping, grocery shopping, one of those essential activities, get gas, go to doctors, whatever the case is, you have to use common sense on that. Uh, actually, if I live by the state line, crossed over to Ohio to get gas or get some carry out, the answer is probably gonna be no. Um, but again, you need to contact Labor Relations and she can elaborate more on that. And I will give you her phone number, 765-454-1405. I would say no, you have to use some common sense like I keep saying. Um, you're not going to a big gathering. You're just doing part of your essential business. So, or your essential things as a family. So please use common sense, but again, contact uh, Labor Relations if you have any questions on that. 
Number 19, being reinstated most likely by the June 1st, will I go back on the initial call to return or will I receive a second call from the plant once I have reinstated? Once you reinstate, you will be automatically plant to layoff. So if they need to call you back, they'll call you back after that, uh, the initial flip to layoff. It may be the next week, or you will stay off, layoff on one week, and you know that you have people under you and seniority that you want to go back, you need to notify your committeemen and labor relations know that you want to return to work. Um, so again, make sure, once you do reinstate, make sure that you are fully reinstated, you will get flip the layoff, and once you're on layoff, you have to assume that role of unemployment and all that, you gotta follow all that stuff. But if you are late, flip the layoff, or lower seniority under you, you do have that request where you can go in and, and bump that lower seniority out in your department. Number 20, I have a trip planned and I am forced to return to work. I would only need to take one PA next Friday. Am I still allowed to do so? Yes, and I brought that up before. If you have something going on where you take the PAA, you take your PAA. Uh, keep in mind, it's only 10% of the department. When you get that less, you get that few people back, the department, the 10% shrinks. So what used to be maybe 15 might be only seven or eight now. Um, so the biggest thing is you're not in attendance procedure. Give it to your supervisor. If they don't pre-excuse it and you're not in attendance procedure, you still have the opportunity to call in a PAA. As contractual, they can't deny that. Number 21, have all the step and pole used to open the restroom doors been installed? Um, actually, the step and pole is a little bracket down at the bottom of the door that you utilize to put your foot on it. Instead of using your hands to pull the handle of the door, you put your foot on that and pull back on that. Um, they have been installed on some, but not 100% of all of them, because right now they're doing a JSRA because somebody brought up the question that what if we have to pull a groin muscle trying to open the door? So they're trying to figure out if there's a better way of doing that. Uh, I know, um, but not all doors are really easy to open with your foot to pull, just get your elbow in there and push the rest of the way open. So they are tackling that. And I know when I did the plant tour two days ago with all the bathrooms and all that stuff, I did identify some, but I couldn't remember seeing them all and I reached out to HR and they weren't 100% sure if all of them were being done, uh, or they weren't 100% sure if all had been done. So we're trying to figure out a better way or if that's the way they're gonna stick with. Um, so that's I have all the questions I have for now. Um, again, I reiterate, use common sense when you fill out your questionnaire. You have to wear the mask and the safety glasses. I don't like wearing the safety glasses when you're on break because everybody needs to, that doesn't wear prescription glasses or any of those, they like to take them off because it hurts the bridge of your nose or the hotter it gets in there, there's gonna be some sweat. I mean, I understand that wholeheartedly. Um, I reached out to the International, didn't get a good answer and I wasn't really impressed with that answer they gave me. They didn't even address what I was asking them. Um, so we'll have to take that on a case by case basis. Uh, the plant manager is well aware of that. He knows there's gonna be some problems with the heat and the humidity in there, the sweating and all that stuff, and we'll have to work on those things. Um, but welcome back to all those who are coming back next week. Um, and please just get used to wearing the mask and safety glasses. And like I said, if you have any questions, you need to notify me so I can bring it up uh, so we can get it fixed. Um, try not to get aggravated. Um, respect those around you. Um, if you do get aggravated, you know, take a cool down period you know, walk away, cool down. I would rather people come up and yell at the union officials and, and get a face-to-face a -face on the floor with somebody else. So, and we understand everybody will get frustrated. Uh, there's people in there now who are frustrated, but this is what we got to work with. This is a new script, it's never been written. So we have to write this as we go because there's something learned different than when you have 10 people in there, when you have 300 to 500 or 700, there's different uh, questions that, that's gonna come up. So we'll have to find out those answers. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, please notify uh, Hannah or Dwayne, and we'll get those on uh, at the next video taping, which will be next Friday. Uh, welcome everybody back. Um, if you have any questions, contact me when you get back, and we'll address any of your concerns. And please, please be respectful and be safe. Thank you.